and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, I would like in the name of Bishop Malesic, Monsignor Riffle, the rector of the cathedral, and on behalf of Father Kevin Fazio, who is administrator of Butler Area Catholic Parishes, who will be our homilist today, and also Father John Lenvi, the chaplain of St. Joseph High School, and also the administrator of Our Lady of the Most Blessed Sacrament Parish in Natrona Heights. And on behalf of the faculty, staff, and administration of St. Joseph High School, to welcome all who are joining us for this special graduation mass. We know that this is a unique and extraordinary year, and our thoughts and our prayers are with each and every one of you, and especially our graduates. And in front of our altar, you see these candles, which are representative of each of the graduates of the class of 2020. So they and their family and all of their loved ones are in our thoughts and prayers today, and we offer them our sincere congratulations. As we prepare now to enter into our worship, let us begin as we acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and your blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in your inexpressible providence we're pleased to choose St. Joseph as spouse of the Most Holy Mother of your Son. Grant, we pray, that we who revere him as our protector on earth may be worthy of his heavenly intercession. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Put on, then, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another if one has a grievance against another. As the Lord has forgiven you, so much you also do. And over all these put on love, that is, the bond of perfection. And let the peace of Christ control your hearts, the peace into which you were also called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as in all wisdom you teach and admonish one another, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, thanks be to God. God.
reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jacob was the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Of her was born Jesus, who is called the Christ. Now this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. For it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son in you to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took his wife into his home. Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. As Monsignor Kulik mentioned at the beginning of Mass, my name is Father Kevin Fazio, and when I was asked a number of months ago 
by Mrs. Konecki to offer this homily during this graduation. I was more than honored to do so. Certainly that was well before all of this stuff happened. But nonetheless, here we are. I'm still glad to be here and offer you, hopefully, a few brief words to, um, to reflect upon and to think about. Uh, I have a good friend who is a very successful and highly respected college basketball coach. And when he was your age, when he was in high school and discerning what to do next, one of the things he was thinking about was, even at such a young age, what, what do I think God wants me to do? He's a very devout man, very, um, very faithful man. And even from a young age, was doing his best to discern what God's will was for him. So there was a, a local seminary that was having this come and see weekend, which means uh, a young guy can go and spend the weekend, spend some time in that community, getting a, an idea of what life is like, getting to meet some of the people, ask questions. So he did. He went off and evidently had a great weekend because when he returned home, he was incredibly excited. And he's telling his siblings and he's telling his parents, wow, this was, this was an awesome weekend. It was just so, it was so cool. The priest in charge, his name is Father Bill. And Father Bill gave us a number of talks and they were great and they were fun. And he was just awesome. And I met the, a lot of the guys that were there and we played sports and the food was great. And Father Bill spoke a number of times and gave great speeches. And his parents stopped and said, whoa, what, what did Father Bill say that was so great? What did, he, what did he say that you're so excited about? And his response was, I have no idea. I totally forget what he said. But all I know is I want to be a part of whatever's going on with Father Bill leading the way, of whatever he is a part of. Well, he never ended up going to the seminary, but he ended up becoming friends with Father Bill. And the point was well taken when he tells this story that we respond to, we feed off of people's energy far more than we do to people's words. Ironic that a preacher is saying that. But it's true, as important as our words are and as valuable as they are, and we know that once they leave our mouths, we cannot get them back. The human person just seems to respond and feed off of other people's energy. Whether it's positive or not so much. Certainly for those of us who are Catholics, for the vast majority of Catholics around the world for the last number of months, we have had to rely upon feeding off of God's energy, as opposed to being so used to feeding off of Eucharist, off of the physical presence in his most precious body and blood. So substitute other words in for energy. Spirit. Have to feed off of this spirit and the graces that God has given us, those graces we receive beginning with our baptism, to then give us the energy to exude to the rest of the world. And while we haven't been able to receive him in physical communion, and physical Eucharist, it doesn't lessen God's mercy. It doesn't lessen his love. It doesn't lessen his value. 
It doesn't lessen his transformative powers. Certainly, all of you seniors here have been robbed. Let's face it. Let's not try to soften it or talk around it. You've been robbed of a good portion of your senior year. Those things that you were looking forward to were taken away from you. You didn't get to experience what typical seniors in high school get to experience. And there's nothing that I can say or anybody else can say that will alleviate the pain, the sacrifices, the suffering, the difficulties of it all. But know that while you have been unable to physically, perhaps, experience what you were planning on, doesn't lessen your contribution to St. Joe's, your families, your friends. It doesn't lessen how much you are loved and how much you are able to love. It doesn't lessen your ability to share in God's transformative powers. But you need to feed off of God's energy. Mrs. Konecki told me before Mass that in order for you to graduate, you have to answer the following question correctly. How many words of St. Joseph were actually recorded in sacred scripture? Now you have to email that in to her, get the right answer. You're not allowed to go on Google. You have to know it already and email it into her in order to actually graduate. I'm teasing. She didn't tell me that before Mass. But nonetheless, if you don't know that answer, it might be good to check it out. Hint. St. Joseph's actions were what defined the man, not so much his words. His response to what he thought God was asking him to do. His trust in God's will for him and his family and the faith that he put in God's transformative powers. So, whatever community you are part of right now, starting with your families, and branching out to all the people that God has put and will put in your lives, whatever communities you will go into as your paths of life will now branch out and move in different directions. Feed off of God's graces. Receive everything that he has to give you. And then be and share that loving, merciful, beautiful energy with the people that he puts in your lives. My dear brothers and sisters, with confidence and trust in Almighty God, we now turn to him this day and ask him to hear our prayers and our petitions, which in confidence and trust we now place before him. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, Bishop Malesic, Bishop Zubik, and all who lead the church, May they be filled with the love of Christ and lead the people of God to learn the gospel values of compassion and care for all. We pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For the world, 
that the people of the world might respond to the challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic, economic unrest, violence, and poverty with compassion for all. We pray to the Lord. Hear, Hear us, us, O Lord. Lord. For those graduating from St. Joseph High School, may God's spirit of wisdom lead them and guide them as they embark on new paths. We pray to the Lord. Hear, Hear us, us, O Lord. Lord. For our St. Joseph High School community, may we continue to bring the message of the gospel to the world through our prayer, our work of education, and care for the people of God. We pray to the Lord. Hear yes. us, O Lord. For those who serve as first responders in law enforcement and in civic service, may God watch over them as they seek to serve others in safety, peace, justice and truth, we pray to the Lord. Hear, Hear us, us, O Lord. For faithful departed, especially the deceased members of the St. Joseph High School community, that the risen Christ will welcome them to the heavenly inheritance prepared to them by the Father, we pray to the Lord. Hear, Hear us, O Lord. O God, Almighty Father, we give you thanks for all of the blessings you have bestowed upon us. We ask you to hear and answer these prayers which we make this day. Help us always to strive to do your will, as did St. Joseph, and to always strive to give sanctity, justice, honor, and scholarship to all that we do. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. As we prepare to offer the sacrifice of praise, O Holy Father, we humbly ask to be sustained in our service by the prayers of St. Joseph, whom you called to watch like a father on earth over your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, and in honoring Saint Joseph, to give you fitting praise, to glorify you and bless you. For this just man was given by you as spouse to the Virgin Mother of God and set as a wise and faithful servant in charge of your household to watch like a father over your only begotten Son who was conceived by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtue of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O oh Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, 
he said the blessing and broke the, gave the, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat his bread and drink his cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May you make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph the Son. Your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing hope. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Edward our Bishop and David our Bishop. Your order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned to be for you. In your compassion, your merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you after passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, to whom you saw in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Restored by these life-giving sacraments, Lord, may we live for you always in justice and holiness, helped by the example and intercession of Saint Joseph, who in carrying out your great mysteries, served you as a man just and obedient. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Good evening, Monsignor, Reverend Fathers, graduates, families, alumni, and friends. Before we begin, I would like to express my gratitude to Bishop Molesic, Bishop of the Diocese of Greensburg, and Monsignor Riffle, Rector of Blessed Sacrament Cathedral, for their hospitality and allowing us to hold our graduation in this beautiful Blessed Sacrament Cathedral, Mother Church of the Diocese of Greensburg, and for giving us access to state-of-the-art technology under the direction of Ms. Jennifer Mealy, 
Director of Communications and Evangelization. Thank you, Ms. Neely. St. Joseph High School has had a long history with the Greensburg Diocese, educating students from the Allegheny Valley, that would be both sides of the river, before the diocese even existed. We look forward to continuing that close relationship. Special thank yous to Vicar General Monsignor Larry Kulik, St. Joseph High School Class of 84, our pastor and chaplain, Father John Lenvi, homilist, Father Kevin Fazio, cantors, Mr. Tom Octave and Mrs. Sarah Doubt Octave, St. Joseph High School Class of 97, organist, Mr. Christopher Pardini, our assistant principal, Mrs. Minnick, and religion teacher, Mr. Pater, St. Joseph High School Class of 2008. This is a special night, our first ever virtual graduation and a special class, St. Joseph High School's 104th graduation class. Based on our graduates' incredible story this year of resilience, courage, hope, and trust in God, I am confident that this class will contribute to our strong foundation for the next century and future generations. On the wall of our St. John Paul II Center are his words, do not be afraid. God works in the concrete and personal affairs of each of us. Don't let the time that the Lord gives you run on as if everything were due to chance. It was not due to chance that you, our graduates, have the honor and privilege of graduating from St. Joseph High School. Many people, parents, faculty, pastors, families, alumni, and friends have sacrificed to make it possible for you to be among those special few who have been blessed with a St. Joseph High School education. So I challenge you to not be afraid. Take the blessings of your St. Joseph High School education and continue to dream, to make a difference with your unique gifts. As our late school counselor, Mrs. Harmon, always said, be the change you want to see in the world. You are the few and the special called this year to carry the state of mind we call St. Joseph High School into the future. I challenge you and entrust you with keeping the pillars of St. Joseph High School alive and well far into the future. My prayer for you is that you are never afraid to go forward in the St. Joseph High School state of mind where sanctity, justice, honor, and scholarship are important to you. To help you remember us and to honor you as new members of our very exclusive group we call alumni, each of you will receive at our in-person graduation a gold pin of the school seal embossed with SJHS Sanctity, Justice, Honor, and Scholarship. At this time, traditionally, we would ask everyone in the church who graduated from St. Joseph High School to stand and welcome our graduates as new alumni. The tradition continues tonight with Monsignor Kulik, Mrs. Octave, and Mr. Pater joining me in representing all of our alumni. Would you please stand? We congratulate and welcome the class of 2020 into that exclusive organization, the one to which we all belong, the alumni of St. Joseph High School.
We will now recognize our honor graduates. These students have earned a final cumulative QPA of 4.0 or higher. This is no easy feat with our rigorous college and high school and AP courses. Congratulations to the following students for earning this honor. Julia Ammon. Elena M. Angelo. Nicholas Graham Brackett. Spencer Benjamin Brackett. Molly E. Coleman. Erica N. Cook. Tyler J. Fontana. Isabella Grace Forster. Joseph R. Godinez. Veronica Lynn Garini. Kimberly Renee Halligan. Caitlin Marie Lukes. Madeline Joyce Moat. Emily Teresa Nichols. Camille Carol Piscor. Sarah Elizabeth Preston. Casey Jordan Seagriff. Beatrix Cliver Stickney. Ava Louise Swanson. Elias John Swarcheski. Joshua Frank Tominak. Lauren Elizabeth Troiano. Kenny Zhang. Benjamin Edward Zock. Congratulations to each of our honor students. There is a three-way tie for salutatorian. Congratulations to our first salutatorian, Erica Cook. Good evening, friends, family, loved ones, faculty members, and fellow classmates. Thank you all for joining us today to celebrate the class of 2020. Today is special not only for the students, but all who are here. I think I speak for all of us when I say these past four years of high school have definitely had their ups and downs. However, we all got through it with the love and support from those around us. We have been taught that the greatest gift is love. As we gather today, we thank all of you for standing by our sides through the struggles and successes, joyous moments and bad. But most importantly, we thank you for helping us grow into the young adults who stand before you. We have learned many lessons and acquired many skills needed to achieve our dreams, but our relationships we have with all of you who believed in us are what we value most. As recent events have shown, relationships are key. I'm sure at this point, we're all tired of hearing the words Corona, COVID-19, virus, etc. Unfortunately, this drastically impacted the end of our high school careers. Adjusting from the traditional classroom setting to online learning was not always easy but all of you helped us to see the light in this dark and uncertain time. No one could have predicted this pandemic, but it was the help, love, and support of great faculty, loved ones, and peers that encouraged us through this strange time. The continuous checking in of our friends and family, the availability each teacher made for their students to offer additional help, and the entire school community doing all they could to uphold traditions is what kept me going. Given that all situations are temporary, we know that brighter days are ahead. This missing semester does not define our time at St. Joseph High School. In fact, it has highlighted what truly matters most. Just as the friendliness of the students and faculty, along with the support of our friends and family, are what made the transition into high school fun and exciting, we know that those memories and relationships will also help us to embark on the journeys ahead. On behalf of the class of 2020, it is with my pleasure to thank everyone for their continuous love and support. Whether you are a faculty member, family, community member, or friend, you have played an irreplaceable role in helping us get to the finish line of high school, and we are eager to start our next race. Thank you. Our next salutatorian is Caitlin Lutz. I would like to thank all of you, friends, family, 
teachers, faculty, and staff for joining us this evening. Everyone here has supported and encouraged us, contributing to our journey in both our best and worst times. Thank you for your continued support and dedication in helping us persevere through the good and bad, ups and downs, highs and lows, and every moment in between that brought us to today. Now it's time to turn the lights back on for the final performance of our high school career. It's hard to believe that this day has finally arrived after four years. The road has been rough at times, but I can confidently say that there was a lesson to be learned in each challenge we faced. From our debut freshman year through this last difficult month of finals, the challenges, struggles, tests, and changes made us who we are today because we found strength not only in persevering, but in each other. Even on some of the most daunting days, we found ways to have fun, like betting each other food for who could score higher on tests to take some of the stress off of the workload or tasks for that day. Somehow, together, we managed to complete assignments on time and slide into our seats before the bell rang, usually. Those difficult times have finally paid off. Tonight's celebration shows that if you persevered once, you can do it again, whether you choose to work, go to college, pursue a trade, join the military, and more. Remember that although this is the beginning of the end, it is also the beginning of the next act of our lives. The end of the ceremony will be our curtain call, and this is going to be a beautiful final performance. Regardless of the new path you will embark on, it will be another opportunity to shine again. Congratulations, Class of 2020. You stole the show. Our final salutatorian is Kenny Zhang. Welcome friends, family, faculty, and staff to the graduation of class of 2020. On behalf of my class, I want to say thank you to all those involved who took care of us, nurtured us, and molded us into the people that we are today. Thank you to all of our teachers who have been passionate in their classes and teaching us that there is more to education than just books and tests. Thank you to all of our faculty that have made our experience at St. Joseph so memorable and enjoyable. Thank you to our friends and family who have supported us through the ups and the downs. Without all of you, our experiences both in life and at St. Joseph High School would not have been as great as they have been. Now, to my own class. Congratulations. We did it. Looking back on these past four years, it has felt like we spent a lifetime together. We have made so many memories and they have become a unique stamp on all of us. If I could summarize our years together in few words, I would say that we are the class of change. In our freshman year, we will come to know one another and welcome Mr. Pater, who taught us empathy and compassion. In sophomore year, we met Mrs. Brown, who taught us how to smile on our roughest mornings. In junior year, we said goodbye to Miss Pucciarelli, but secured the school's first baseball playoff win in 18 seasons with Coach Kurt Krebs. This year, we met Mr. Winterhofer and Mrs. Dietrich, who taught us how to perform under pressure. Each person brought something new and added unique varieties to our learning experiences. In the end, we have always been the class who had to adjust to change, and we always made the best of it. The saying that I held dearly from freshman year rings true as we now partake in this online graduation, and is the one advice I can confidently offer to my classmates. Don't be afraid to take detours in your pursuit of success. The journey is the most beautiful part, just like all of our years together. So now, as our time together ends, and all of you step forth on your own paths, don't be afraid of changes in your lives. The road to success and greatness will not be fun without the hills and the valleys. Congratulations, Class of 2020. We made it. We have a two-way tie for valedictorian. Congratulations to valedictorian Ava Swanson. Good evening, Class of 2020. As I came to write this final homework assignment at 11.57 p.m., realizing I have two minutes left, I thought to myself, self, what am I going to do when I can't do Mr. Barry's chemistry homework in Mr. West's physics class anymore? What am I going to do when I don't see my friends running across the parking lot every morning for their dear life to attempt and not miss the light bell? Or what about when after I've had a hard day and I come out of class to see my friends huddled around the back of my trunk in 30 degree weather expecting a daily tailgate? Honestly, I don't know. But one thing I can count on is the adaptive qualities St. Joseph High School has equipped me with. I am honored to stand in front of the class of 2020 today and tell you, we made it. 
I am so proud to have grown up with a group of intelligent, innovative, and extraordinary young people. With these people come the academic institution that has shaped each one of us in the most unique ways. St. Joseph High School has given me so much more than a prestigious education. It has given me the humbling pillars of sanctity, justice, honor, and scholarship. I have learned to not be so quick as to simply complete the task at hand, but to give everything my best effort and understanding. I was able to enhance my diligence to the fullest at this school, which is more than I could ever ask for. I hope to carry these valuable qualities onto the next adventure and very far into my adulthood. As our final goodbye, I would firstly like to thank all of my teachers for their hint of humor, hard work, and dedication. I would also like to thank Mrs. Kanicki, Mrs. Minnick, Mrs. Palumbo, and Mrs. Jones for being so flexible and willing to put together this rather unique experience for us tonight. I would most definitely like to thank my mom and dad for being so supportive during these very important years. And I lastly would like to thank the class of 2020 for being a part of my story and helping me be who I am today. I wish you all the best of luck as you enter into this wonderful world. And I hope that St. Joe's will forever remain in your hearts. Congratulations to valedictorian Elias Swarczewski. Good evening, classmates, faculty, staff, parents, and administration. Classmates, I know that you, just as well as I, cannot help but feel like we've been cheated out of half of our senior year, and it's frustrating. We're all suffering a little bit right now. But when you think about it, we've been suffering for about four years. All of the interactive notebook assignments, geometry gizmos, Tuesday tidbits, pogles, English SAT prep, math excels, web assigns, and lab reports can be considered suffering, right? As with everything, there's no good without bad, but lucky for me, the bad was only some schoolwork, while the good was friendships, stories, and skills that will last a lifetime. I think the past four years have gone quicker than most of us expected, and probably much quicker than any of us wanted them to. Unfortunately, it's time for us all to go our separate ways into the world and take with us the skills and lessons we learned from our time here at St. Joseph High School. Whether that be math techniques from Mr. Vincent or Dr. Bunker, Catholic morals from Mr. Pater, the teamwork and communication skills from playing on an athletic team, or even how to get rich off stocks from Ms. Pucciarelli. I am confident that every single person in this graduating class is destined for great things because the class of 2020 has something special. We have a community of tightly bonded friends, family, and faculty, and it's the people around us that shape our character. I'm so thankful for the people that I've met and how they have changed my life for the better. Without them, I would not be sitting in front of you today. They have taught me many valuable lessons and skills, not just in the classroom, but outside as well. Among those is perseverance. In my opinion, this is the greatest attribute to anyone's mindset. Classmates, in these uncertain times, we must look fear, anxiety, challenges, suffering, and failure straight in the eye and persevere. Because not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings. Because we know that suffering produces perseverance, Perseverance, character, and character, hope. Lastly, I would like to thank Mrs. Kanicki, Mrs. Menick, Mrs. Jones, and everyone who helped to put this graduation together, along with all the faculty that helped me to learn and grow as an individual over the past four years. Let us go forth into our next endeavors and know that any struggles and suffering we may face are preparing us for blessings ahead as long as we persevere. Thank you. We now recognize our graduates of the class of 2020, Julia Ammon, Elena M. Angelo, Alexandria A. Babylon, Bella Nicole Black, Nicholas Graham Brackett, Spencer Benjamin Brackett. Jules C. Sinello. Molly E. Coleman. Erica N. Cook. Caroline A. Dolby. Rory E. 
Douglas. Ian Alexander Drake. Dominic P. Fellows. Tyler J. Fontana. Isabella Grace Forster. Skyler I. Geibel. Joseph R. Godinez. Veronica Lynn Guarini. Kimberly Renee Halligan. Mason A. Hurlbut. Brooke Danielle Kindler. Julia Lynn Lalacata. Bowen Robert Lambermont. Madison Marie Lara. Caitlin Marie Lukes. Joshua Daniel Maltese. Abby Rose McElhaney. Madeline Joyce Moat. Emily Teresa Nichols. Evan J. Ostrowski. Victoria Independence Peel. Camille Carol Piscor. Sarah Elizabeth Preston. Ethan E. Schroeder. Casey Jordan Seagriff. Michael E. Smith. Lathan Jacob Schuyler Spinetti. Beatrix Cliver Stickney. Ava Louise Swanson. Elias John Swarczewski. Joshua Frank Tominak. Lauren Elizabeth Troiano. Zui H. Bo. Jesse David Walters. Madeline Veronica Willard. Maximilian Joseph Wolf. Tyler Michael Wood. Luke Joseph Zagurski. Kenny Zhang. Benjamin Edward Zock. Congratulations to each of our graduates. Please now join in the singing of our alma mater. Thank you. 